Hi folks, it's uh, time to work with so Sophie again today. Sophie is uh, four weeks old and uh, today's a holiday, but guess what? No vacation from taking care of babies. So, uh, so she's pretty hungry, I think, and uh, but she's been getting kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of lollygagging about her food. But I think she's kind of hungry today, so let's see if she'll... Let's see if she'll eat, how good she'll eat. Come on, babe. Good girl. Oh, look at that. She took the whole, whole the tube. I got a little bit more. You want some more? Huh? You want some more? Let's see. Come on. Oh, she's pretty full. Oh, yep, yep. There you go. You're good. You're good. She's, uh, over 400 grams uh, today. <laughs> ah, imagine that. 18 grams at, at the hatch weight. And uh, if you can remember just a few short weeks ago how, how, uh, how small she was. Look at she's barely fitting in this, in this uh, container. And uh, we don't... Uh, we don't have the, the egg behind us anymore because we have, we have baby. So this was, <laughs> this was just, uh, let's see, this baby is not a week old. Probably about four days? Uh, four or five days? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, about four or five days. I can't remember exactly. Um, I lost track of the days. But, uh. Yeah, imagine that. This was just a couple of weeks ago, so she's four weeks. So just say like three, three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, she was this size. And uh, I haven't done a DNA on this baby yet, but uh, that was awesome that we had an egg in the background and now, now we've got a baby in the background. <laughs> she's in her brooder. Um, I think I'm gonna call that one a she for a while too because uh, Till we get the results because um, typically we've had a lot of females and and uh, I don't think Sophie's gonna be the last female uh, for this round and uh, Sophie's Sophie's really really developing I mean look at all these these feathers are, are starting to come out now and uh, she's She's vocal. She's a good girl, though. She doesn't... Um, I think they start to develop their personality pretty early. Um, she squawks a little bit for me sometimes when I, when I pull her out of the, uh, the incubator, uh, the brooder. I, I call it an incubator. It's basically, it's a brooder that I, I built out of incubator parts. Um, and... Uh, what? You're done now, though. No, you are done. Believe me, you're full. You are so full. Yes, you are. You are so full, baby. Yes, you are so full. We don't have a... I don't know, we don't have a really great angle on here, do we? Let's, let's bring this down. And, uh... Oh... Get more of a, there we go. Let's get more of a, a straight on angle for it. Now, now Josie's gonna start making noise. I don't know why. Just got fed. She's certainly not hungry. Uh oh. What'd you say back there? Poppy. Josie is in. Josie's a hyacinth and she's in a cage with a, with a, um, a male green wing. And Josie actually is a male. Um, so we have to, uh, she's always, I, I, I was told she was a female. <coughs> and then last year I got a DNA test on her because I was, uh, I was going to trade her, uh, to someone. And, uh, then I got a DNA test. It came back male. 
I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, her mate had died. Um, I, I think they just had it mixed up on who was the male and who was the female because they were a breeding pair. And, and uh, so that's kind of how that goes. But I just wanted to be safe before I traded the guy a, a female. And I said, well, let me do this just to be safe. Um, and sure enough, it comes back a male. Are you kidding me? I mean, um, but when it's that, you know, important of a, of a transaction, you know, you want to have your ducks in a row and you don't want accidents to happen when, when it's a, a very expensive bird like that, you know. And everybody knows hyacinths are like over the moon. Um, I've had mine for quite a while before the price went crazy. I mean, they've always been expensive, but not like it is today. So I think they're coming down a little bit, but, uh, how are you doing, baby? Are you my good girl? Huh? Don't you hiss at me. What? Don't you hiss at me. You, you silly girl. No, you don't. No, you don't. Big girl. She's gonna be a good girl. They all, they all end up uh, being good babies. I mean, I don't think I've ever had a bad baby. They've all been, uh, 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 out of all my babies, um, I think I've had some that give me a little bit more, more issues with eating, like, once they get kind of big, sometimes they can, you know, I think last week I was telling you about taking your time sometimes with the, uh, with the syringe feeding. And uh, now typically, once they open that throat, wham, slam it down. Yes, that's fine. But uh, what you'll find if you're doing this a lot is that once they close that throat up, you are spraying the stuff all over the place. So um, it, you, you, you kind of have to gauge your bird just by do they, um, do they close their throat on you from time to time. So in that case, if you do have some who they'll open up, take the food, and then close it off on you, uh, you have to be careful, you know, and then just give them a little bit more time. So that kind of comes into play when it's just uh, um, individual bird experience, really. Generally, yeah, you just pretty much take it two seconds, one, two, down. It's, it's, it's gone, you know, and especially if you have tons of birds, you know, you can't, you know, be taking, you know, your sweet time when you've got scores of birds, you know, but uh, uh, you're trying to, you know, get everybody fed before the food cools down even, you know. You want the, you know, the temperature is important too, so. Uh, uh, but I, I have never done um, uh, actually sticking the uh, syringe down into the crop and, and like that. Usually, you know, if everything's going right, they open up their throat and whammo, down it goes, and everything's uh, done within a couple of seconds. But just be flexible. That's all I, that, that's my main issue is with, you know, and just remember that nothing is always written, you know, completely um, in absolutes that this is absolutely the way it is. You're just always flexible, and you're always, you know, just trying to learn and, and, and uh, work, work with your babies, and and, and, and this goes, this goes, this goes to to for the same notion of once you get a baby bird in your home and stuff like that too. You know, it's like it's like it's it's all okay. Let's see how this goes. Let's be flexible. Um, uh, sometimes people have a lot of questions. Uh, I, do you put a a, a cover the cage at night and do you do this and that? They kind of worry about a lot of things. Um, no, I don't, they're, my birds are in pretty big cages. I mean, I would be, I would have some pretty big <laughs> blankets to try to cover these cages. I mean, 
Um, no, I don't do that. I do shut off the light in the room, you know, and then, uh, and, and then I, I, you know, I, 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 I just try to go with the flow, you know, and, you know, I'm up late at night and a lot of times, you know, they're okay, you know, they, they, they might start making noise when I go into the kitchen and turn the light on. I hate it when Josie does that, because he is just so loud, but, uh, uh, but normally they don't, uh, for the most part, they don't, and, you know, you just can't write rules like that, what to do, when they have to go to bed, it's like a lot of this stuff just ends up being how you live, how you run your home, and they're just adaptable to you, so you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry so much about all these things. Just, uh, you know, just love them, feed them, feed them well. Everybody got uh, fed their fresh food today, and uh, uh, the macaws really love that. Uh, I noticed they went, they went for it right away. Uh, so it's uh, like, of course, this little, this little bird. She's not, she's not eating any, anything except formula right now. So, <laughs> uh, she's probably wondering, who am I talking to? Are you talking to me? Yeah, you talking to me? Are you talking to me? <laughs> She's just, she's just so interested in just watching me. She's really got her eye on me. Well, folks, uh, I guess that's just a little bit to say for today. I, I really don't have too much. Um, we're just kind of uh, charting the growth here. Uh, one month old, and uh, we're starting to see quite a few quite a few pin feathers uh, uh, and uh, everything is everything is uh, going normal no no major issues no, no minor issues either really everything is everything's everything's perfect and she's just doing feathering out all over the place she's, she's just doing really well so Why does Josie have to make all that noise? Huh? Huh? <laughs> so, as soon as we get a break here, I'll say goodbye. Folks, thanks for listening. Wow, and people think cockatoos are loud. That is a hyacinth macaw. He's the loudest bird that I have. <laughs> and, and he likes to make noise. He does this about twice a day. So. All right, baby. All right, we're gonna put baby back. So uh, thanks for listening and thanks for watching.